again. We're just about to go through part two. So, maybe slightly harder questions here. Tim estimates the cost within a range, which gives the correct range for the cost of clothes. So I guess very roughly, I could say this is about 100, about 120, uh, this is about 10, this is about 140. Roughly, we're just adding a couple of dollars here and there. So it's 220 plus 150, 370. Um, so yeah, I guess something like this is reasonable. Bit of a strange question. I guess if it's trying to go between 90 and 100, 110 and 120, 10 and 20, 140 and 150, 200, three, yeah, 350, yeah, so 350 is a minimum, it would be, um, so you've got to be looking at something that's at greater than 350, but I think this one is the one, either way, a little bit of a strange question. Uh, next one. Jane David had identical chocolate bars. David ate seven eighths. Jane ate more of her chocolate bar than David. What could she have eaten? So no calculator, so a little bit trickier. You should be able to know that a half is, as a decimal, 0.5. You should be able to know that half of that it will be a quarter. That's 0.25. The quarter hence being 25%. Should have learned that for sure already. Then half of this. Half of 25 will be 12 and a half, 0.125. And if you add up all those, that gets you 0.875, which is 7 eighths. Okay? Uh, if you didn't know that, then you might be in a little bit of strife. As soon as you figure out what an eighth is, you just need to multiply it by 7, and you get this. Now, this one should be very clearly 0.8. 8 tenths. A tenth is 0.1, 8 of them is that. Hopefully you know that uh, a ninth will be 0.1. Obviously you times that 0.11. If you times that by 9, you get 99. So this is about 0.77. We're talking 0.875, so it's got to be bigger. This one would be a tough one to know off by heart, because that's got like sort of rolling numbers. But hopefully, again, like I just said, you know that point a ninth is 0.11. Eight of those means that this will be 0.88. By the way, this number is recurring. 1111111188888888. Either way, this one's definitely bigger. Bit of a trickier question, that one. Okay. Monty and Tara buy pencils for school. Tara buys twice the number. Monty buys plus an additional four. M is Monty. Which expression shows number that she buys? So so it would be t equals 2 times Monty plus 4. So whatever matches that. That's not 2 times Monty. That's 2 times Monty and 4. That's not. That's not. That's one. Okay. Uh, this has to be 45 degrees. 180 degrees in total. 90 plus 45 is 135. 180 take 135 gives you 45. So that means that these two must be the same, which means we call that an isosceles triangle. Because two of these sides will be the same for them to have the two identical angles. Definitely not an equilateral. Equilateral will be, I can't really draw it very good on this. But they will all be 60 degrees, all of them. As we can see, these are not all the same. The scalene will have three different angles for three different side lengths. Because we've got two of the same, two same angles means we've got two same side lengths. Okay, keeping silkworms. If we follow the pattern, how many were they eaten in 25 days? So multiplies by three, multiplies by three, multiplies by three, multiplied by another three. Three times 100 is 300. Three times 30 is 90, 3 times 5 is 15, 
add all those up, you should get 405. At least that's what I got in my head. You can just obviously do 135 times 3. There's another way of doing it as well. Anyways, uh, coin flips. What's the difference between the expected number of heads and the actual number of heads? Uh, six. You'd think if uh, it's half chance, it should have been 30 heads and 30 tails. We've got six less. So six is the difference. Difference means subtraction. Glenn has six cups of sugar. Biscuit uses three quarters of a cup. What's the greatest number of batches Glenn can make? So, uh, six cups means six times four is 24. There's 24 quarters worth. If you use three quarters for a batch and 24 divided by three is eight. You make eight batches. Okay, the length and width for four rectangles in centimeters, which one has a perimeter of 32. You just got to double each of these um, numbers um, because obviously for a rectangle, you've got two of one side length and two of the other. So if I'm trying to get 32, I just need to see which of these add up to 16. It's that first one. 10 and 6 is 16 times 2 is 32. This one's 22, which means that will have a perimeter of 44. This one have a perimeter of 36. This one will have a perimeter of 64. Way too big. Regular price of a shirt is 24.50. The shirt is on sale for 10% off of the regular price. What's the sale price of the shirt? So if you've got 24.50, you're trying to get figure out what is 10% of that. You just have to move the decimal place one across, and you will end up getting to 45. Then you just need to do the subtraction. 24.50 take to 45 should be easy enough to do that uh, that's 4 0 5 and 4 take 2 is 2 and 2 22 dollars and 5 cents I'm not going to write it over there put an arrow okay Guess my number. My number is a square number. I'm guessing four. My number is divisible by two and by nine. No good. I'm now thinking 36. My number has two digits. What is Paul's number? Well, I think it's 36. You just have to go through your nine times tables, I guess. Nine, 18, 27, 36, 45, 54 as an example, going through my nine times tables. To be divisible by two, it means it has to end in an even number. So it crosses out that one, crosses out that one, crosses out that one. Um, this is not a square number. And um, neither is that one. And this one is that easy. Should know that that's six times six. That's what it means by square number. All right, pair costs four per kilo. 4.15 kilos of pears. How much does Ben pay for the pears? Ah, a little bit trickier. This you will need to know that you could figure out point 0.1 is a tenth, and then uh, point 0.05 is half of that. So you need a tenth plus a twentieth plus you need four lots. So four times the four, that's easy. That will be $16. That's easy. But then when it comes to adding these two up, that can be a little bit trickier. A tenth of $4 will obviously be 40 cents. And a 20th will be half of that. So it'll be 20 cents. So all up, when you add all those three up, you get 16, 60. All right, Lucy has enlarged her regular, I would say that's a bit trickier. For your age. Lucy enlarged her rectangular deck so that the length and width were both tripled. How many times as large is it? Well, if it was one by one and then you triple it on both, that means it's three by three. The area will now be nine, whereas for before it was only one. That sets meters uh, squared. So it was one meter squared, now it's nine meters squared, nine times as big. Now, uh, this year, Sam's age is both a prime number and a factor of 57. In two years' time, Sam's age will be a prime number again. What is Sam's age this year? 
That's a bit of a tricky one. Well, I know that a, a factor of 57 is 19, but if you didn't know that, you would need to just experiment. So, but the thing is, if it was 19, uh, that's much too big because 19 plus number 2 will get 21. That's not a prime number. So we're not at 19. But it's 19 times 3 is 57. 3 is a prime number. Two years later, uh, 5 is also a prime number. So really, you would have just need to experiment with numbers from the start. Uh, pick a number from the start, add 2 to it, and does that help you? Um, but yes, that's what I would have done. Okay. I'm thinking that should be the answer that they're looking for because you could have also had one and then two years later be three. But I know that some some people don't call one a prime number because they want it to it needs to be only divisible by one and uh itself. This has one and in itself is the same thing. So three is the answer I'm thinking. Uh and thirty-two object is made by cutting off each corner of a cube. How many edges does it have? Yeah. Interesting. Very interesting. Well, if we talk about the faces, the, this, uh, what is that? Octagonal? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's got eight edges there. And if you go across all Oh no, because there's going to be some that double up. Well, this does test thinking a little bit. That's 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, because they have that joint one there. Whoa. This one is a bit of a prickly one. I'm going to have to pause for a second. I'm thinking that my thinking was all no good. So maybe the way that I should have looked at it instead. You have a oh, awful drawing. You have a die. Very rough die picture there. Um, and the amount of edges it would have. So on a cube. Oh, got one of the lines. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. A bit tougher because my drawing is so bad. So do a good drawing theme. That will help you out. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight, nine, ten. 11, 12, so all the edges, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, yes, so we've got 12 edges, if we cut a triangle in there like this, that means that it will add an extra 3, so we're starting off with 12, we add another 3 here, 3, add another 3 here, add another 3 here, add another 3 here, and at the back you're adding 4 more sets of 3 as well, that means that you should be adding four lots of three, plus another four lots of three, 12 plus 12, plus the original 12. You should have 36. That's my thinking. Um, hopefully we've gotten all right. Uh, let me know if you've got any questions in the comments below. Thank you so much.